Hello, how are you? Today, I am going to present reproductive neuroendocrinology. The hormone of the reproductive cycle control the reproductive cycle and coordinate the ovarian and uterine cycles. The key hormone in the female reproductive cycle are follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, progesterone. The female reproductive organ consists of ovary, one pair of ovary, one pair of uterine tube. Uh, this is the uterus, it has three parts, fundus body, fundus body and the cervix and the ovary and the fallopian tube. The ovary is suspended by the ovarian ligament and infant developmental the ligament. Tube is suspended by the broad ligament. And the uterus is suspended by the uterosacral and macandroids and the broad ligament. So, uterus is the muscular organ. Its main function is the mechanical, could give mechanical protection. It gives nutritional support to the fetus and ostrium oval for the developing amber, the fetus. And it is supported by broad ligament and three pairs of suspensory ligament. Uterus, uterine wall consists of three layers: the myometrium, the outer muscular layer; endometrium, a thin inner and glandular mucosa; perimetrium, an incomplete serosa continuous with the perimetrium; peritoneum. And it is the site of implantation of developing embryo it has three parts as all know the fundus body and the cervix each one endometrium has two layers the basal layer and the functional layer the functional layer is built up and shed its cycle so this is the uterine serosal layer and the myometrium and the endometrium and uterine musculature, uterine blood supply is mainly through the uterine artery. The uterine artery gives bronze at the level of myometrium. It becomes arcuate artery, then gives bronze of, of radial artery. At the endometrium and the myometri endometrial junction, it becomes spiral artery. So, in the uterine cycle, we divide into three parts, the, the menstrual part and the proliferative phase and the secretory phase. What is the function of the ovary? The main function is production of mature site, capable of fertilization and embryonic development. Production of ovarian hormone, this estrogen and progesterone. Production of gonadal peptide, the ingivine and activine. The Main functional unit of the ovary is follicle. The follicles are composed of oocyte, granulosa cell, and theca cell. The follicles are present in a number of different stages of growth. The primordial follicle, that is in the resting phase. Then the growing follicle are primary, secondary, and the antral follicles. And the matured graphene follicle. And after ovulation, corpus luteum forms. So, the basic thing is 3 to 5 million ogonia differentiate into primary oocyte during early development. And oocytes become surrounded by squamous cell to become primordial cell. The primordial follicle, which is surrounded by the squamous cell, this is. The ugunia, which is surrounded by this squamous cell, is called primordial follicle. Most primordial follicles undergo atresia, leaving only four lock at birth. The oocyte at this stage arrested in meiosis one, that is prophes. And this stages of ovarian follicle can be identified in following puberty. It has three phases. First is primordial follicle. The growing follicle and the matured graphene follicle. I already told the primordial follicle are prevalent located at the periphery of the cortex. 
a single layer of squamous follicular cells surrounding the oocyte. And the growing cell divided in the early primary follicle, like primary follicle and secondary follicle. And finally the mature graphene follicle. These three stages called oogenesis. So the primordial follicle when the ogonia surrounded by the squamous follicular cell, this is called single layer squamous follicular cell, this is called primordial. But when the single layer squamous cell become keywordal, this is called early primary follicle. And late primary follicle, the when the follicular cells are multilayer, junopellucidal forms, and thick external and internal forms. This is called late primary follicle. And the antrum develops and this is called secondary follicle or antral follicle. On the antrum occupied most of the structure of the follicle and oocyte post periphery and it forms corona radiata, cumulus uterus and this is called mature graphene follicle. So how the hormonal regulation occurs for the oogenesis and ovulation. The hypothalamus the release generates a gonadotropin releasing factor which stimulates release of LH and FSH from the anterior pituitary. From the anterior pituitary FSH LH produce then FSH and LH works on ovary that ultimately produce estradiol and testosterone and this estrogen and progesterone works at the cellular target level. So, basically hypothalamus releases the coronary releasing hormone. It works in the pituitary, anterior pituitary, anterior pituitary produce FSS and LH. It works in the ovary and ovary and follicular development occurs and ovulation occurs. These two luteinization occurs and ultimately estrogen and progesterone produce, inhibin and activin also produce. This is the vicious circle that's called hypothalamopituitary ovarian axis. So effect of gonadal dropping generates on gonadal dropping. The GnRH is released in a pulsatile manner, stimulating the synthesis and release of LH and FSH. The GnRH acts through its receptor on the pituitary gonadal drop cells, stimulating, stimulating production of phospholipase C. This phospholipase C works in the IP3 pathway or DAG or PKC pathway that are responsible for gonadal dropping synthesis and release. So how ovarian estradiol production happen? Under the stimulation of the LH, the growing follicle, graphene follicle, structured thicker cell produce androgen. And the granulosa cell, under the stimulation of the offices, the granulosa cell aromatization occurs and with the enzyme aromatase, Aromatase enzyme produce estrogen from androgen. The regulation of progesterone production. Progesterone is produced from thicker cell, mature granulosa cell, and from the corpus luteum. In this case, gonadotropin induces expression of steroidogenic acute regulatory protein P450 side chain TMS. So what is the function of estradiol? Estradiol has important actions in number of other tissues. It causes proliferation of uterine endometrium, increase contractility of the uterine myometrium, stimulate development of mammary gland, stimulate follicle growth, the grand cell proliferation, effects on bone metabolism, hepatic-like protein production, 
genital uterine tract mood and cognition in that. Effects are mediated through intracellular estrogen receptor both alpha and beta and possible membrane effect. What is the function of the progesterone? The progesterone exert positive and negative feedback effect on gonadal tropin synthesis and release. Progesterone also acts on many issues, many tissues. It stimulates secretory activity of the uterine endometrium, inhibit contractility of the uterine myometrium, stimulate mammary growth. The actions of the progesterones are mediated through an intracellular progesterone receptor which acts as a transcription factor. Now, let's see the how hormonal regulation of oogenesis and ovulation occurs. In the ovarian cycle, we divide it in three phase, the follicular phase, ovulation phase and luteal phase. And the, at the endometrium, we divide it also three phase, menstrual phase, proliferative phase and secretory phase. So, in the follicular phase, 10 to 20 primordial follicle begin to develop in response to FSH and LH. FSH and LH stimulate theca and granulosa cell production of estrogen and progesterone. Theca and granulosa cell production of estrogen and progesterone and surge of LH induced ovulation. And when ovulation occurs, the theca and granulosa cell transforms into the corpus luteum and secrete large amount of progesterone. If fertilization does not occur, corpus luteum degenerate. And if fertilization does occur, ACG released from the embryo maintains corpus luteum. So, from hypothalamus, GNR is released. The GNR is acts on the anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary produce FSH. Under the stimulation of the follicle FSH, the follicles start to grow and when matured follicle form, there is a luteal LH starts and ovulation occurs. Under the stimulation of the LH, corpus luteum forms. And in the endometrium, when the follicles are growing, start to grow, this is basically in the menstrual phase. So, under the stimulation of the FSH, when the growing follicle mature from the granulosa cell, estrogen production, huge number of estrogen produced, so from the basal layer of the endometrium, it starts to grow and becomes proliferative phase. And after ovulation, endometrium tissue and gland become more thick, hypertrophic, and more coil and more vascular. This is not. So, what happened at the blood level when this in the menstrual phase, like in the menstrual phase, both estrogen and progesterone in the basal level, when the follicles start to grow, estrogen gradually start to rise. And there is a peak, just before ovulation, there is a peak of estrogen. And on the peak of estrogen, there is a LA surge also occurs. So, ovulation occurs. After ovulation, there is a rise of progesterone. And estrogen a little bit lower than the progesterone, but never comes with the baseline. This is the normal physiology that happens in the menstrual cycle. So, from hypothalamus, GNR is rich. Thus, GNR is works on anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary produce FSH and LH. Under the stimulation of the FSH and LH, the, the growing follicle become matured. And matured growing follicle produce estrogen. That high level of estrogen ultimately inhibit hypothalamus so that there is no further release of releasing factor and thereby FSH and LH. But when 
evolution occurs and under the LH SARS, the evolution occurs, the evolution occurs corpus luteum, that's corpus luteum form, the corpus luteum produce estrogen and progesterone, basically progesterone, that's corpus luteum also immediately happens. So, in a menstrual cycle, women have ovulatory cycle of about 28 days in length. Day 1 of the cycle is defined as the first day of menstruation. There are two phases of cycle named after ovarian and uterine function during like that phase. First two weeks follicular or proliferative phase. Second two weeks luteal or secretory phase. The pre ovulatory gonadotropin surge occurs in the middle of this cycle around day 40. The follicular phase, small antral follicles develop, a dominant follicle is selected and goes to pre ovulatory stage. Mid cycle, the gonadotropin surges or cause ovulation of the dominant follicle. In the luteal phase, the corpus luteum forms and becomes functional, secreting large amount of progesterone, followed by estradiol results in negative feedback, not positive feedback because progesterone increase before E2. If pregnancy does not take rise, the corpus luteum regress and progesterone decision level decrease. Proliferative phase, increasing estradiol levels stimulate proliferation of the functional layer of the uterine and endometrium. Results in Increase thickness of the endometrium, increase growth of uterine glands and uterine arteries. The secretive stage, progesterone acts on the endometrium, uterine gland become coiled and secret more mucus, uterine arteries become coiled. If pregnancy does not occur, progesterone and estrogen level decrease at the end of the secretory stage. This vessel spasm of the artery is called the necrosis of the tissue. Loss of functional layer with bleeding of uterine arteries. That's the menstruation. And as I already told in endometrium, undergo cyclic changes which will prepare it for implantation of the fertilized ovum. Endometrium has two layers, functional layer and basal layer. The functional layer Borders, uterine lumen, slapped off at menstruation, contains uterine gland. The basal layer retained at menstruation, source of cell for regeneration of the functional layer. So, what I told already told the uterine cycle that it has three phases proliferative phase, secretory phase, and menstrual phase. Now let's talk about male reproductive system. Like female reproductive system, male reproductive system, the functional unit is testis. From testis, there is a connecting structure epidermis and the vas deferens. When the vas deferens connect with the femoral vesicle and it trains to the urethra. This is the normal female genital structure. The functional unit is the testes. As you know, the tunica albuginea, the thick connective tissue capsule. This connective tissue septa divide testes into 250 lobules. Each lobule contains 1 to 4 seminiferous tubules and interstitial connective tissue. So, the seminiferous tubule is the structure for produce sperm. and interstitial tissue contains lytic cell which produce testosterone. And the seminiferous tubule connected with the rectus tubules 
then ready test is the different duct tubes, then ultimately tend to be epididymis. So, in spermatogenesis, it has four stages spermatogonium, primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, and spermatid. So, in a, as I told, the sertoli cells here, the sertoli cells are columnar with adjoining lateral process. It extends from basal lumina to the lumen, uh, lumen. and sertoli sertoli junction divides seminiferous tubules into basal and adjuvenal structure. So, in a basal lumina, the spermatogonial cells are two n cell. That's proliferated by mitosis. So, mitogonial daughter cell type B is parvatogonium. Then, when first meiotic division completed, it's called primary spermatocyte. And second meiotic division complete, it's called secondary spermatocyte, which says N number of chromosomes. And next stage is the maturation stage, that is early spermatid and late spermatid. So, in a spermatogenesis, basically three phases, the spermatogonial phase, that is the mitosis phase, second spermatocyte phase, that is meiosis phase, divided by primary spermatocyte and secondary spermatocyte, and third stage is spermiogenesis, that is spermatid phase or maturation phase. So, during maturation phase, the round spermatid become full structure of sperm. Like it has head, neck, tail and acrosome. The acrosome formation, Golgi granule fused to form acrosome that contains hydrolytic enzyme which will enable the spermatozoa to move through the investing layers of the oocyte. And also flagellar formation, centrioles and associate axome as well as the microtubular cilia. Changes in size and shape of the nucleus, chromatin condenses and shedding residual cytoplasm. That's the spermiogenesis. And the, these three phases completely cause, called spermatogenesis. And the maturation phase is called spermiogenesis. So, hormonal control is same like female endocrine system. Ultimate control from hypothalamus. Hypothalamus release gonad generates releasing factor that works on the anterior that release FSH and LH under the stimulation of the LH, lytic cells activated and lytic cells produce testosterone. But under the stimulation of the FSA, certainly it becomes activated and with the environment of the testosterone, certainly cell stimulates spermatogenic cells, that spermatogenic cells ultimately produce sperm. And under the stimulation of the testosterone, that is responsible for the development of the accessory reproductive organs, secondary sexual characteristics, metabolic effect, and behavioral effect. Okay. So, the LH stimulates testosterone production by lytic cell, and FSH stimulates production of sperm in conjunction with the testosterone by regulating activity of the sertoli cell. Sertoli cell stimulated by FSH and testosterone release, androgen binding protein which binds testosterone, thereby increasing testosterone concentration within the seminiferous tubules and stimulating spermatogenesis. 
So thank you all.